Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to show you how to design your own custom creative transitions. Um, it's so beautiful because you can do this for your brand if you run a business or if you're creating videos for your clients just like I do, um, then that would be a great way of creating custom creative transitions to match their brand identity when it comes to their color palette. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. So first things first, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to start this uh, from scratch and then I'm going to go to my studio and I'll go to backgrounds. Let's just create our first scene. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not going to use any characters or anything like that. I'll just show you the way how to create, uh, you know, custom transitions um, that are really beautiful. And again, you have to be careful when it comes to choosing the right colors, especially if you're doing this for your brand or your uh, clients um, brand, then you have to match their color palette. So now that we've got our first background, um, this will be, you know, scene number one. So let's just go ahead and expand my timeline just a little. And then I'm going to also zoom in on my timeline just like this. And um, I just basically want to keep the scene for about eight seconds. And then I'm going to go ahead and move my playhead about six seconds. Now the transition length is usually one and a half or two seconds at most uh, to make it look really beautiful and uh, transition smoothly uh, between scenes. So next up is I'm going to go ahead and grab another background. So that will be my scene number two. Um, I'll just scale it up to make it a full width and then I'm going to close my studio and let's just get ready to create our transition. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'll go open up my shapes and then um, I'll show you two two variations and then you can be more creative about it. Um, depends on how you like it. And uh, you can also check out different shapes in here or you can go to my uh, media and then go to SVG API. Open up this in full gallery where you can try, you know, different shapes. And of course, you have your search uh, bar where you can type in for, you know, the shape that you're looking for and then use it as your transition. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'll just, uh, you know, do this for from the shapes that we've got right here. And then I'll start with using the one, uh, the first example that I uh, used in my video. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this one. And that would be uh, this shape. So what I'm going to do for this one is that I need to have a duplicate of this image, first of all. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'll keep this one to use it a little bit later. So let's just start with this one, uh, for example, and then I'm going to go ahead and go under settings on the right panel and then open up colors. Then I want to grab the tra uh, the transparency or the opacity down to zero. Next up is we're going to create a border for our shape, right? So uh, we have our border set to zero pixels. So we just need to, you know, scale this up to about five and then we could choose um, a color for this one. Now I'm going to use three layers of this shape to use it as my transition. Uh, so let's just start, you, you know, with the let's do purple and then I'll just go ahead and scale this up. So what I want to make sure of is that I can, you know, I scale it up uh, that goes beyond my scene like this. And let me go ahead and just click go to canvas mode and then click show so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom out like this. Now you can see the shape um, is surrounding my uh, my background right here, but it needs to be, you know, outside the frame. Right. Next step is I'm going to duplicate this one. Right. And then I'm going to scale it up and make it a little bit bigger than a previous one like this. And then I'm going to change its uh, border color. So from uh, purple, let's just do another. I mean, let's just do pink, for example, and we can make another duplicate. That will be our third one. And then I'm going to also scale this up a little just to make it a little bit bigger than the second one as well. And then we're going to change the border color uh, from pink to um, let's try yellow, for example, and now that I have those, you know, covered, what I'm going to do is I'll select all three shapes like this, and then I'm going to right click and then group this one and right click again, then, then rename it and call this uh, creative transition. 
cool all right next up is i'm going to use my shape that i had duplicated in the first place this one and in order to to achieve this first of all i need to scale this up um, and make it about the same size of my first layer the purple one so um let's go ahead and scale this up like that and then what i'm going to do is i'll go ahead and start working with my uh, transition before i use the shape so i'll just uh you know drag my shape a little to the right so, so i could just work with the transition now i'm going to go and go ahead and select it and i'll just uh, click on add animation and then I'm going to do position. The easing is going to be um, on the out effect. And that would be slow mo, which is slow motion. And I'm going to zoom in on my timeline just a little. Expand the duration between um, both keyframes to extend the length of my animation or make it uh, you know, a little longer. So like I said, you can make it one and a half second or two seconds to make it look smooth. And then I'm going to drag this just a little so I can click on the first keyframe like this so now that i have it selected and it's turned in blue i'm going to use my keyboard hold shift with my left arrow key and then drag this all the way to the left side outside of my frame like this make sure it's just about you know aligned with my uh canvas just like this right let me just uh, zoom out and now you can see better right here so this is my shape um, which I'm going to use as a transition. Now, let's go ahead and start working with the second one. So if I click on the second uh, keyframe for this one, it's going to go back to um, its position where I wanted it to be on the center of the canvas. But again, it's, um, you know, out of my canvas, but it's just like covering the, uh, the, the background, right? So next up is I'll go ahead and start working with my shape that I have right here. And what I'll do is just I'll, I'll take my playhead, move it backward in time where my first keyframe for the transition is. I'll click on add animation, then do the same thing. So we're going to do a position easing or actually let's just uh, not do this. Uh, there's one step that I forgot to do before I make this. So I'm going to delete the animation and I'm sorry about this. Um, so your next step after positioning your uh, your transition you know, on the left side of your canvas and then creating the animation for it is simply just selecting your image, which which is our, uh, you know, background, scene number two. And then we're going to select it, select it with our shape that we created. And we want to mask those together. So we're going to right click and then mask this with my shape. Next up is I'm going to select my image and then I'm going to go under settings. And it's important to uh, to turn on the detach mask. So I can only animate the mask and keep the background as is um, on the canvas. So now that I've got this covered, now I have my image and it's currently masked with my shape. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I want to make sure that my playhead is exactly where the first keyframe of my uh, transition is. Then have it selected and then click on add animation, do a position. Easing is going to be out again, slow motion. And then we want to expand uh, the uh, keyframe. So we're dragging the second one to make sure it's matching or lined up with the first, uh, you know, keyframes of my transition. So we're going to click on the first keyframe and then I'm going to uh, start positioning the, um, the shape. So I'm going to use my keyboard and hold shift on the left arrow key. And then I'm going to move it all the way to the left side. Make sure it is you know, centered on the transition like this. And so when I, you know, when I select the second keyframe of this one, it should just go back to normal. Now let's go ahead and hide uh, what's outside the canvas. Click on the letter F to center this and then go back and show you what that looks like. This is so beautiful, so beautiful. Now let's go ahead and show you another variation. And again, you can be more creative about it. So I'm going to open up my studio one more time and let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, grab our backgrounds again. So we're going to grab this one, scale it up to make it a full width. And then I'm going to expand it just a little, move my playhead, um, you know, a couple of seconds where before this one ends. And then I'm going to drag my second one right here, scale it up to give me a full width like that, and then close my studio. And let's just go ahead and start creating. 
So next up is I'm going to go and open up my shapes and let's try a different shape this time. Um, let us choose something like um, maybe we can use. Uh, let me try and think of a shape that I can use, be more creative, creative about it. Um, we have a lot of shapes, really, and we can be more creative in using different shapes. Uh, let's just try using this one. So what I'm going to do is I'll just rotate it to the left side like this, 90 degrees. And then again, remember, I want to have a duplicate of this one. So I'm going to duplicate it uh, by hitting Control D on my keyboard to have a duplicate. If you're using uh, Mac OS, and that's going to be Command, Command, and then D, right? Uh, so let's just get this away and start working with our shape. And same thing. So we're going to go under settings, open up our colors and then drag the opacity all the way down to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was just clicking on the wrong one. Uh, click on that shape, open up colors and then drag the transparency all the way down to 0%. And then we're going to create a border for it. So we're going to, you know, um, scale this up. Let's try three pixels like this. And then I'm going to change the colors for this one. And let us do, um, let us do red for this one. And I'm going to zoom out of my canvas just like this. Select my shape. And then I'm going to scale it up. Again, I'm going to make sure that it's bigger than my, uh, my canvas, just like that. Uh, we may want to do more than that, like this. Here we go. So if I click on show, you can see better right now where it is. So let's just select the shape and then just move it a little to the right, like this one, like this. And then next up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate it. Um, I'm going to scale it up a little, make it bigger like this open up the border color and then change that one. And let's do, um, let's just do blue like this, duplicate it again. So that will be our third layer. Go to scale on under settings and then scale this up and make it a little bit bigger. Change the color to baby blue like this. And let's see what we're working with right now. So next up, is selecting all the shapes right now. And I'm gonna right click and then group all this together like this. And then I'm going to uh, have it selected, make sure that it is selected, click on add animation, go back to properties, select position, easing is going to be on the out effect, slow motion. And again, I wanna keep this for about, you know, a couple of seconds like this. Make sure that the background of the previous scene is at least you know, um, underneath or the length of it goes, goes beyond the second keyframe, right? So that, it, you know, when the transition is happening, you don't see a white screen in between. So let's just move the, or drag the keyframes on a transition like this, click on the first trans, uh, keyframe of my transition with my keyboard, hold shift and the left arrow key. And then I'm going to move this all the way to the left side outside of my canvas, just like that. There you go. And then when I click on the second keyframe, it's gonna go back to where I want it. So I'm gonna move my playhead backward in time where the first keyframe is, grab my shape that I created, and you know I could just you know position it right here in the center, and then scale this up like this. I wanna make sure that it's uh, the same size of the, the smallest layer, which is the red color that has a red, uh, col you know, border color. So let's just scale this up like that. And then center it right here. So now that I've got this covered, next up is I'm going to select my, my image and the shape. So we'll hit control and then select the shape, right click, and then mask this together. Next up is selecting the image one more time. Go under settings and then turn on the detach mask feature. And then we're going to sel uh, select um, add animation. Go to properties, do position. Easing is going to be out, slow motion. And I'm going to extend the duration between both keyframes. Make sure it's lined up uh, with the first one on the transition. 
So this is where it's going to start. When I click on the first keyframe, this is where it's going to start. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll select the second keyframe of this one. And then I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard with the right arrow key and then move this all the way to the right and make sure it is centered on my transition like this so that it basically just covers the whole theme like that. Pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and click the letter F to center our canvas. Go back and then play this and show you what that looks like. Absolutely amazing. I love this, it's so beautiful. I have been using it for quite some time for my projects. Um, I hope that you love it. Have fun creating and be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed to my channel. Uh, give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment if you have any questions. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.